Oh well, you didn't get to see the nice bit. But uh, hello everybody, I'm Luke. I'm from Cotswold Archaeology and I'm normally referred to as the safety guy. Um, but uh, thank you to my colleagues from uh, MGF and Temporary Works Forum for uh, that brief introduction. I'm here really to say, what does this mean for us as archaeologists? Um, obviously for deep excavations, that's sort of a, should be obvious to all of us that we need to have this stuff in place. Um, but really what I want to talk about is, oh, excellent, all the pictures this time. Do we need to re redesign the way we operate around temporary works? I'm not going to give you an answer to it either, to be honest. Um, it is a complicated question. Um, and again, we have to go back to the definitions. Now, we've had one from the Temporary Works Forum. This is the HSE's take on it, um, which mirrors closely what Temporary Works Forum has said. Um, and that is part of the construction project that needed to enable the permanent works, um, whether that's for the excavations, for the foundations, pipes, utilities, all the rest of that stuff, uh, haul roads, crane piling rigs, that kind of thing. Now for us, the question we have to ask, and I'm not going to give you an answer necessarily, is do we enable construction? Um, yes, and then again, no. Very much a lot of what we do means digging holes that is disabling the construction because they have to fill in and stabilize the ground that we've dug our holes in first before they can do whatever they want to do. We don't dig the foundations for them. We don't generally install the hall roads or put up the site hoardings, all the rest of this sort of stuff. Now, I'm not going to stand here and disagree with my colleagues and say, no, temporary works doesn't count for us um, because there is a precedent for this uh, with CDM. Again, we are specifically the only industry that is specifically excluded and mentioned in CDM as we don't do certain bits of it. That doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't follow the best practice. And in fact, that's exactly what we should be doing. So, there is a debate there on terminology. We've heard briefly about temporary work supervisors, temporary work coordinators, designers, all that kind of thing. Do we need to have them on site? Do we have to have them as a separate, a separate role to our site supervisors, our project officers, senior project officers, all the rest of it? Maybe, sometimes. If we're talking about, as we say, deep excavations where we need that greater level, it's, a, it's based on risk, as with all things. But to give you some idea, what could be covered by temporary works? Site fencing, site hoardings. Um, establishing your access and egress. I know we, well, if we're talking about an evaluation, we tend to get told long before they're planning to actually build and think possibly before they've got their planning permissions and all the rest of it sorted. And we just sort of bomb through a farmer's gate in a safe and careful manner, of course. Um, and we don't think too much about that. But on some sites, we might need to be thinking a bit more if there's access issues, that sort of thing. Establishing the welfare, the compounds, all the rest of it, that needs decent structural basis to it. That comes under temporary works. Um, obviously, the excavations, that's of all of them, the one thing we do the most and the one I'm not going to talk about because I think that's been covered quite nicely. Um, spoil storage and management, something that we don't necessarily think about as much as we should. Um, I could go and find a load of pictures of various spool heaps that have fallen down mountains and similar things. It tends not to end well for whoever lives below them. Um, but that's something we need to think about. And again, water management, because we live and work in the UK and it tends to be quite wet. Um, again, do we need to go through the whole temporary works process with the whole design, the coordinators, the supervisors on site? Do we need to do that for all of this stuff? Probably not. But again, it's going to depend on your site and the arrangements there. Do you have a PC on site? Are they organising this stuff? Which 
if you have a PC, they should be. Um, on the other hand, it's stuff we want to think about and we may want to think about in our separate organisations adopting to a greater or lesser to suit our needs and again to suit the risks that we are facing in our excavations. Um, so yeah, that's a really brief overview for us. Yeah, that is really a brief overview. Um, what we are doing, because as I say, I'm not going to answer the questions for you today. Um, it is going to be very project specific as always. A lot of this stuff you're already doing. This isn't a, to answer my first question slightly, do we need to redesign? No. Do we need to adopt some of the terminology so that we're understood better by our clients? Do we need to potentially plan to include temporary works in our thinking when we're designing our excavations and our uh, evaluations and all the rest of it? Yes. To be honest, we need to think more about this. We need to move with the times and include this in our methodologies, include it in our thinking. We may need to train people in-house to do some of these projects, this, this, these roles, if we're doing that kind of work. If, on the other hand, we're predominantly doing shallow rural excavations, you're already doing it already. You're already doing risk assessments. You're already doing method statements, some sort of health and safety plan or construction phase plan-esque documents. Your staff are already trained, hopefully, um, to the, the correct level for their role. They will have adequate supervision. They'll have had adequate briefings. This is the same stuff that Temporary Works is talking about. However, all is not lost. Fear not. Fame has a cunning plan. So cunning you can put a tail on it and call it a fox. So what are we going to do? Over the next 12 months-ish, um, myself and Dan Poor from OA are working together with the Fame Health and Safety Group. We are going to be coming up with a new technical note, which we see as being the first of a series. Now, this is just very much going to be effectively the details you've heard today fleshed out a bit more. What is temporary works? What does that mean for archaeology? What does that mean for your organisations? What do you need to do? What do you not need to do? That kind of thing. Um, and we see that hopefully as being the first in a series of documents and guides. And again, some of these things will involve our co colleagues from the Temporary Works Forum, hopefully, um, giving us some handy hints and tips when we need to do stuff, when we don't need to do stuff, all the rest of it. Um, and that will go into some of the more specific, so things like, uh, personally speaking, I'd like to see one on spoil management. What is an appropriate height for a spoil heap? Well, we all know there isn't a single answer to that, but we'll be able to give hopefully some guidance as to where to get that information. Um, so yeah, the other thing we will be doing is there is the potential for some sums of monies from fame to work up some sort of designs, standard designs, off the shelf type of stuff that we can all take, heavily caveated, of course, and use or use to adapt to, for our works. Um, quite what this is going to look like, how this is quite going to work full stop, we're not really sure at the moment, very, very early days on that one. But again, things to watch out for in the next 12 months or so.